Since it started warming up here, I've been super excited about building up my Grand National. I got it out again and I've been daily in it. And I've posted before just the simple bolt-ons and stuff that I've done to it, but I'm getting ready to get a lot more in-depth with this car. It had quite a few paint flaws. You can see the bumper fillers chipped there and the uh, headlight bezels were missing paint, especially on the passenger side. I mean, that looked terrible. And uh, that, that chip there is definitely deep, I mean, down to the primer. So I took a paint pen and I used it to fill that in and it actually worked pretty good. And I pulled the bezels out, used some trim paint from AutoZone, and uh, I spent time in the prep work, and it really paid off, and these look like they're brand new now. I mean, I'm impressed at how good it actually turned out. And you can see here there's a chip next to the door, and the paint pin filled that in as well. And it actually made up some of the thickness of the paint there too, so it's now just about smooth. But I'm really happy with the way these paint repairs came out, and uh, they've held up so far. It's been about two or three weeks I've been driving it up to Grissom Air Force Base which is over 100 miles away and uh, really I've washed it a few times and stuff and it's holding up wonderful. So I've said it in the past my dad specializes in turbo Buicks he owns a GNX number 543 and he's friends with Waylon Butch Cox the famous turbo Buick drag racer and uh, we bought a whole bunch of parts off of him here not too long ago. Waylon Cox is the guy who owns the only Lingenfelder Grand National, and uh, it's pretty famous and stuff. He's a cool guy. But anyways, included in those parts was an old Ken Bell ported inlet uh, upper intake manifold, and it also was mated to the Ken Bell ported throttle body, and I really thought that would be a good modification to stick on my car because after reading about it, I found out that it flows a lot better. The shape of it gets air into each of the ports a little better than what the stock unit does. It's overall rounded more on the inside instead of being squared off. And as you can see, there is no EGR tube there. I made a little mock-up with the lower intake manifold and uh, just wanted to set it on there to look neat mainly. But I've been playing with the idea of getting the power plate for this car because I heard that it helps the idle quite a bit. And if you have any suggestions, I'd appreciate comments about that power plate because I have heard that it can both help power and hurt power. And I honestly don't know what to believe because it seems like there's two sides of that argument. I also got the Racetronics fuel pump rewire kit which he threw in with some parts we got and then my vacuum block is leaking so I bought an aluminum one and on top of that I got the turbo tweak chip and what you do is you go on their website and you can see in the order comments there I told them exactly what parts I'd be running and what I want to do with the car and they sent me a 93 octane chip that will push me to 18 psi and it'll definitely help performance. The guys at Turbo Tweak are also very knowledgeable and very nice people. So here we have the stock upper intake plenum and it's right at 60 millimeters. So it's not small, but it's not huge either. And uh, you can see the EGR tube blocks a lot of the airflow that would be going down into the cylinders. And here, the 70 millimeter Ken Bell, you can see there's a big difference. And without that EGR tube, it allows the air to kind of get down in there more. I have read that some people grind on down in through the lower intake manifold to get rid of that EGR tube, but I don't want to grind on it while it's in the vehicle, obviously, and I don't feel like pulling it off and doing the gaskets up again and all that mess. So if I rebuild the engine someday, I may grind that out and port the lower intake manifold, but for now the upper plenum is a big enough improvement for me. With the original upper plenum design and the way the intake's designed, some cylinders naturally get less air than others, and that's a problem with turbo yokes, I guess and the rounded back to this Ken Bell one supposedly evens that airflow out somewhat. You can see here that the throttle body has a small lip behind it where the plenum isn't quite matching and so what I did was I went in and sanded that out on the plenum and widened it so that it doesn't block the airflow at all and here you can see it smooth and lines up perfectly. I also got away with the hump that was left in the side of the upper plenum from being manufactured. Here I have a little mock-up of what it'll look like and I think that's kind of neat. Just kind of did that for fun. I was worried at first that this wouldn't be a necessary mod for where I'm at right now in the build, but I have read that even running stock boost, this is a decent increase in power. It's nothing major and whenever you turn your boost up, it really will start affecting things. One last thing, and to me one of the most important things is I'm taking the car back to where it looks original. I've talked about it for a while and I've finally got the alloy stock appearing rims and they're 8 inch wide and they shine really good like chrome even though they are aluminum so I'm real excited to get those on there with some tires. That's all for this video and I appreciate you guys watching. See you next time.